Right, so uh, thank everybody again for joining us for another WKS Zoom podcast. I'm here with uh, Nathan um, from a band called The Loners. And it's a possibility that uh, Jamie will be joining us um, soon. So how are you doing, Nathan? You all right? Yeah, not too bad, mate, yourself? Yeah, yeah, pretty good, yeah. Um, do you want to start off by telling us a bit about yourself, sort of where you started in music and that sort of stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I started off, um, you know, music at school, really, and, uh, you know, took a, a liking to it. My brother, he played guitar, so, um, you know, the music was always on in the, in the background, and uh, he, he, he's he been the older brother. We had to share a room, so whatever he listened to, I had right. to listen to, you know, sort right. of thing. So, um, and we're both um, 80s kids, you know, so... Um, grew up sort of during the 90s decade, so I was, we were always listening to sort of uh, the grunge, uh, indie rock sort of genre, you know, so uh, a big moment for me, though, was, you know, um, hearing the Stone Roses, um, and then, um, you know, that was one of the reasons why I picked up the guitar in the first place, so, right. so yeah, it's been going since then, and I think I've started writing songs in my mid-teens, and, um, you know, sad to say I'm, I'm, I'm 35 now, you know, so... Uh, those songs that I've been singing about then, uh, or writing about then, you know, I'm, I'm still singing about today, you know, so they mm. all have the same sort of relevance, you know, so, uh, but yeah, just that's basically how music came around for me. Right, so, you know, did you, um, your first guitar then, you know, what sort of, what age and, and what was it? Um, I was I was gifted as a, a guitar as a Christmas present, which I wasn't expecting, uh, which was, you know, it was great. It was a, it was a Gibson um, special edition, um, special edition one actually, which mm. I don't see it, them making anymore. Right. Um, so it's an Epiphone. Um, yeah. But yeah, with the Gibson tag. So I've, I've traded a couple of guitars since, but I've never traded that one. I think right. that one will always stay, you know, uh, close close to my heart with it, you know, with it being the first guitar and whatnot. So it's it's yeah. hanging on the wall. Brilliant. Um, that almost by accident uh, was uh, was given that you know because I'd let mom, I think my mom had said to me do you know what do you want for Christmas and I hadn't even mentioned the guitar you know so uh, it was uh, I was kind of glad that she took it upon herself to to buy me one so it was good. brilliant brilliant yeah. so what you're playing now then so yeah um, I currently have uh, a, another Epiphone um, Les Paul style and um, I've also got a Telecaster Fender Telecaster which mm. The Fender Telecaster seems to be my my pride and, and joy at the moment. The only reason I bought another guitar was um, for just fear of, you know, string breaks on stage or whatnot when I'm playing live. And so I thought, you know, I should really get myself a backup. But, uh, mm. you know, I'm so devoted to the, the Fender that I, I struggle to pick up the Epiphone from time to time, you know. So yeah, but I think yeah. I really should, uh, you know, get my money's worth out of this. So it's, right. a, it's a different sound and it's a good sound. So, yeah, I like it. Okay, so do you, you are you the main songwriter then? Yes, um, yeah. So myself, uh, James the drummer, and uh, Mark, the our bass player, um, we what we usually do is I'll write lyrics and you know I'll come up with the sort of main uh, backbone of the song, and then you know we'll break it down completely and uh, you know add in comp- yeah. uh, they'll add in their components to the song and whatnot and. Uh, yeah, we just, it, it turns into something absolutely amazing. Right. I think we might have somebody coming in here, <laughs> maybe. Hello, hello. Sorry, I had some te- technical issues. That's okay, mate. We are we are recording at the moment, so keep going. Just join yep. us in with the camera when you get there. Yep. Okay, oh, can, can you see me now? No. no. Can't see your beautiful face yet, James. Oh, thanks. Just give me a, just give me a wee second then. I haven't uh, used... Zoom before I usually use Skype, you see. So, right, yeah, technology. Um, yeah, start video, right? Okay, there we go. No, yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, how you doing, James? Better, you all right? Better that way, yeah, that's better, yeah. is it? Yeah, yes, I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Craig? I'm all right, thank you very much. What, um, what do you actually play in the band then? We were just, I was just yakking with Nathan a little bit, but you know, what do you play? Uh, yeah, I'm so I'm the drummer in the band. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, do you do? Uh, I was saying to Nathan about um, songwriting. Um, so, do you? Are you involved in the songwriting as well, or just drumming? 
No, just uh, just drumming. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't get bothered with the, um, the the complicated stuff. I try and keep it as simple as possible. Right. So, how long have you guys then been together as a band? Uh, I think this is coming on. This will be the third year. So it'd have been two years. October just passed. Um, mm-hmm. The loners was made up with myself and another chap. Um, about four years ago, we started the band, and we were more sort of indie pop you know um because he was just playing bass guitar i was playing acoustic guitar so because we, we didn't have a drummer at the time and then um james uh, i actually met james through my brother-in-law and um, we we you know drank together a few times watching the football and the pub and, what, and whatnot um, and then it was just by chance that james had said to me you know i play drums and i actually thought he was kidding at first uh, so you know just drunken chats so i was like yeah sure james sure you do um, but no, he said to me, he says, no, I, I really do play. And so we swapped numbers and then, um, yeah, James joined the band and we were playing with our other bass player for just a couple of months, really. We, I think we'd only done one or two gigs together at that point. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. or fortunately, I suppose you could say, um, the, the bass player, he decided to leave. Um, and like I said, I'd always known Mark from um, my days in university. Uh, and we'd always toyed on the idea of uh, playing in a band together um, and ju- but just life kind of took yeah. over um, you know yeah. so and with him being you know through in Glasgow don't get me wrong it's about a 20 minute half an hour car journey away but you know it's still that distance so mm. um, I, I literally I, I texted him the same day and I said to him look do you want to um, join and uh, he, he had come and seen us a couple of times in Glasgow playing and he said yeah definitely um, so it was it was good that when Mark came along because James and Mark both have sort of punk backgrounds. Uh, right. We, we right. kind of moved us out of the sort of indie pop sound, which I was, I, I didn't know I needed to do, but um, I'm so glad, you know, we did because the sound that we have now is completely different. Right. Um, so it was really good the fact that, you know, it was almost a blessing that uh, Mark and James came into the band because they completely changed the direction mm. of the, the sound and um, right. we're looking back really. So how long have you been drumming for then, James? Uh, yeah, quite quite a long time. I was in a number of uh, sort of punk bands in Scotland um, over over the years. A couple of uh, cover bands as well. Um, but I, I, the original band that I was in, uh, we started in nineteen ninety three. Wow. So I've been okay. basically basically playing uh, playing live uh, since since then. Really, but mm. that lots of gaps in between, you know. Right. So, what would you how would you describe your music then? What genre do you reckon? Yes, and that's that's a difficult one because I, I hear um, all different types of genres in the music that we that we do. Um, whilst whilst um, I've got a sort of a, a punk background, I don't particularly listen to punk. Strangely mm. enough, you know, I would listen mm. to all types of music. Um, and I, I think it's when I first met Nathan, as he said, it was it was like an acoustic setup they had, and it was very uh, sort of indie pop. Um, mm. And we, it, it just transformed itself. Really, we, we didn't do anything. We didn't make a conscious decision that needed to change. It just changed itself. Right. You know, yeah. and then, then, once we became more electric, that was it. It changed it. Yeah. And then when Mark joined, um, so the, the couple of sort of recent songs we've done, um, I, I can hear sort of blues in there. Um, I can hear some, um, definitely some sort of disco stuff coming in as well. Okay. Or some right. dance stuff, I suppose, if you want to call it that. Um, with with uh, punk influences there because of me and Mark, that's always going to be there, I think. Um, mm. And I definitely think that Nathan's writing songs that fit more to what we're doing now. And right. It's quite no- noticeable as well that a lot of the songs we were doing originally, um, we've not dropped them, we've just changed them. Yeah. Right. So what what have you, um, like EP or album-wise, what have you got out there at the moment then? So we have, um, currently we've got two, uh, just an EP with two songs uh, at the moment. Um, we have another song recorded, mastered, it just hasn't been released yet, um, just obviously because of the current uh, climate that we're, we're mm. in. We actually recorded that song maybe, it wasn't like, yeah, it was possibly over a year ago now, so we've probably changed it, to be honest. February, right. it was fe- yeah. February last, last year. Wow. February, all right, okay, so yeah, almost a year then, so yeah, I think we probably have changed it. Um, we were able to get together a few times last year, but um, only when we were allowed, essentially, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, 
But um, so yeah, just just an EP. It's on a, on all all mu- major music platforms, and whatnot, you know. So right, I was going to ask like whereabouts is it available? Yeah, so, so yeah. I'll, I'll I'll do my absolute best to plug it no matter what. So yeah, just um, okay. you know, Amazon, Spotify, iTunes, the the right. usual. Um, but we also have it in this the smaller, um, you know, not as well known platforms. But we figured we should just put it out everywhere, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. So have you got anything on uh, any videos or anything on YouTube? Because normally what I do is I tag a couple of videos onto the interview. So uh, not currently, but uh, my manager has said to me to do this. Um, so that's my plan for this weekend. Um, okay. So I've got a few videos that what I can do is you know just even just friends sending me videos or whatnot, and then I'll. I'll possibly put them online and yeah. uh, get something yeah. up but the, the, most of the videos are on you know facebook or instagram okay um, okay so, no, i just need to link them to a youtube channel to be honest yeah yeah well as soon as you do let me know and then i'll tag a couple in um so what's what sort of is your what's been your favorite venue to perform at question what about yeah, you yeah yeah that, that's a good question I, I suppose for me it's, it's the place where i get the best we get the best sound mm. uh, regardless of how many people come along we've played I've, I've seen us play gigs where there's maybe you know half a dozen people but the sound engineer has given us a really good job and a good a good sound so i, I would say we've got a couple of um, venues in glasgow we played in sucky hall street which have been my personal favorites um certainly the box as uh, is, is, is good uh, and downstairs at What's the one downstairs, Nathan? Uh, uh, nice, it's not nice and sleazy, is it? What's it called? No, is it? Oh no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's right next to the box. Actually, it's right next door to the box oh, in, in yeah. Glasgow. I can't remember the name yet, but it's We're a really good justice. Why unable to plug its name? That's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, that's I think a good sound. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think we've had about uh, a few gigs in the box, and uh, I mean a lot. You know. A lot of the the magic comes from the sound engineer, you know, able to capture the sound that we're going yeah. for. You know, so uh, and fortunately for us, um, we've recorded, uh, I think, two songs with the sound engineer that actually uh, gigged for us uh, on a couple of occasions. So he already knew the sound that we were looking for, you know. So mm-hmm. it was it was an easy setup for us, and uh, you know, there's no there's no shying away from it. We we're a loud band, you know. That's that's what we're, we're we're aiming for. You, when you hear our songs recorded, you wouldn't, you know, necessarily think there's only three members in the band, you know, right. because we are so loud. Um, but you know, it's again, it's not something that we're consciously thinking. We have to be loud. It's just you know the loner it's the way it is. Yeah, yeah that's exactly it. And, and as James um, says, sorry, yes. carry on. Oh, sorry, mate. I was interrupting you. Um, Sort of like, if you could collaborate with anybody, who would you collaborate with? Um, I mean, for me, I think it would probably... Be, I mean, like I said to you at the start of the interview, I'm a big Stone Roses fan, so um, I'd, I'd possibly go... But I'm, I'm more drawn, drawn towards uh, John Squire for, you know, playing the guitar and whatnot and the sound that he managed to bring to the band. Right. Um, but, I mean, lots of acts... Uh, Queen, I mean, how amazing mm, would that be, you know? Mm. Um, you know, I'm a big Black Rebel Motorcycle Club fan, right. and mother fan, you know, so um, yeah. what about you, James? You know I'm going to say something absolutely ridiculous now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, I really love country music Yeah. as well, so I would, I would like a collaboration uh, of our sound um, against a, a country. Um, sound, you know, um, that would be very, very interesting to me, mm. definitely. Um, whether it be blues or country, something like that for me. I, I've, I've always liked Americana music and American music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, on what I download on my on my, my, my iPod, if you like, on my iPad, um, most of it is it's either Scottish music or American music that I, that I would listen to. Yeah. You know, uh, as, as well as all the usual big bands that we have all, you know, but I really, in lockdown, I've been listening to a lot of that, a lot of um, sort of American music. Mm. Um, Springsteen at the moment is quite high up my list at the moment. I'm listening to a lot of Springsteen at the moment, so I've always loved him. So. Yes, yeah, brilliant. Um, <clears throat> so what's next then for the loners? Well, um, we have, <laughs> so far, um, we have a, a festival booked up, but uh, for the, the summer, um, so... But whether that goes ahead, we don't know, mm. you know. So uh, it was, I think, uh, not last year, the year before, 
was I, I would have honestly have said it was possibly going to be our breakthrough year because we had about four festivals and two or three of them you know were quite mainstream festivals that we were about to play on you know so we had mm. quite a few gigs lined up and whatnot so and then obviously uh, corona virus uh, did yeah. what it did uh, so that's that's kind of taken its knock on effect so and at the latter end of last year we were still managing to get together and rehearse um, but then once they brought in obviously the tier restrictions and whatnot yeah um you know we've We've been unable to see each other for the last couple of months now, so mm-hmm. uh, you know, which is a bit of a pain. But I think the future is um, get together and gig as, as quick as we can, and as soon as we can, and then um, you know, and then yeah, hopefully get some more festivals shouting at us. Are you thinking anything about getting in the studio then, and, and maybe putting some stuff down? Yes, definitely. I think that we're almost on. Um, we've got enough for uh, um, album number two now. I think you know so. Album number one's there. It's just a case of you know recording the rest of the songs and mm. putting them there, uh, putting them down. Um, but yeah, it's just a. I think we'll be, we'll be. Uh, you know the the albums will come out in quick succession of each other, um, right. which is good. And the thing is, it's not stopped us writing or playing. You know during this time, um, you know I'll still record and I'll send the videos to the guys and uh, uh, and it'll just be like recordings on you know my phone and whatnot. And, uh, but it's good because you know I know the two of them will go away and you know think of ideas and what to put on the song and uh, you know my uh, bass player Mark he'll he'll come away and he'll say right I've got this bass riff for it and whatnot so mm. so yeah we're still trying to 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 <clears throat> rehearse but just not obviously in the same room yeah yeah okay so um, if you were talking to a younger version of yourself okay what advice would you give yourself. You want to go first, James? Yeah, slow down. Slow, slow down. down. Slow down. Okay. Very simple. Yeah, slow down. Don't try. Don't try and do everything in one day. Fair play. Yeah. Uh, I would probably say speed up. Actually. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'd say, um, I. I. Um, you know. I, I probably should have taken the finger out, especially with music related. Um, you know, a lot sooner. It's given me all this time to write these songs, but at the same time, you know, I think um, I should have, yeah, possibly pushed a lot myself a little bit harder. I started um, doing solo gigs around about the 25, so about 10 years ago. Um, And yeah, um, and don't get me wrong, that was great. And the only reason I decided to go solo at the time was because it was the the annoyance of, you know, having to wait on other band members. not that I have this trouble now, you know, because these two guys are they're good grafters, you know, so I have no faults with them there at all. But mm. uh, I suppose when you're in your 20s, uh, you know, life isn't the same as what it is, you know, in your later years, you know, so. Um, yeah. yeah. OK. Oh, well, final question. I ask everybody this question. Um, is there anybody you'd like to thank for you being here musically now? <laughs> yeah. What about you, James? I'll let you go um, first. Uh, yeah, pr- probably um, my my very first uh, for, the first band that I, that, that I joined at, at school. I went to school down in, down in England, down in Farnham, uh, in Surrey, and um, I was the lead singer of, of our school band. Mm. Um, and and the drummer bought a drum kit, but he couldn't um, put it in his own house because he spent his, his he bought it with money that he'd stolen from his dad. <laughs> so he had to put it in my house. Um, so Justin, uh, I would I would say, so Justin put the kit in in my house, and then one one afternoon I just set it up and and just started to play. I didn't have a clue, I didn't I wasn't trained on it or anything. I just um, listened to some songs and played along with them, and and that was it. It got me hooked on drumming. So if that hadn't happened, then I would probably was, would never be become a drummer. Wow, nice. Yeah. What about you, Nathan? Eh. Uh, like I said, I think um, probably my brother, actually. Um, he, you know, like I said, he was listening to the sort of Nirvana uh, sort of grunge rage and um, and then mixed that with, you know, the big 90s, you know, the the Charlatans and the the, the Stone Roses and, and the whatnots and mixing that all together. Um, yeah, pro- or, or at least my family, mum and dad were big musically as well, you know, I didn't play instruments, but always had, uh, you know, the, the record player on and whatnot. So, um, yeah, family, probably. 
Brilliant. Guys, look, thanks so much for giving me the time for the interview. It's absolutely Thank brilliant. You, yeah. And yeah, apologies for my lateness. Sorry. Yeah, that's cool, mate. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, and, you know, good luck for the foreseeable. And hopefully Thank we'll you. hear uh, an album and see you gigging soon. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, so thank you very much. All right, mate. Yeah. Speak to you soon. Take care. Thanks, man. Bye now. Cheers. Bye. Bye.